From the battlefields to the boardrooms, the spirit of a veteran is unyielding. Risk takers, disciplined executors, team builders, military service has forged us into professionals with the ability to get it done. But what's next after service? Meet the legends, Fred Smith, founder of FedEx, Truett Cathy, founder of Chick-fil-A, Ross Perot, founder of Perot Systems, Phil Knight, founder of Nike, and Gordon Logan, founder of Sport Clips. They turned their military discipline into entrepreneurial success. And so can you. Why franchising? It's the ideal pathway for a entrepreneur, a proven business model, a roadmap to success, and an industry that understands the skills you bring. Franchising means using proven systems, intensive training, and a support system designed to make you successful. One out of every seven franchises is owned by a military veteran. You can join their ranks. Your next mission awaits, and we're here to guide you. Your legacy is just beginning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's workshop. What an awesome video, right? Truly inspiring. I love that video. Um, so we are super excited to have you guys here with us today. Um, and we've got a ton of information to go over with you and a ton of great resources um, in case franchising is something that you're looking uh, to get into. So what I'd like to do to kind of speed up our intro a little bit, so we have a lot of information to get into. Um, I'd like to jump into our poll. We want to know a little bit about you before we jump into the agenda today. So if you could just scan that QR code and head over to slido.com and type in the number 2738372, um, we can go ahead. And we want to know some questions about you first. Franchising, you know, is an amazing option for veterans. It's a perfect hybrid between business ownership without really having to start from scratch. And like the video said, you know, one in seven franchises is actually owned and operated by a veteran. So it's definitely a testament to your fortitude, work ethic, and your ability to follow process and procedures. Um, franchising has that business plan, you know, and you're trained in ex to execute a plan. So if done right, you can find real financial freedom and satisfaction and do something meaningful. All right, so what branch of service did you serve in? Looks like Army is leading the way, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, other Space Force, any military spouses out there? Space Force. All right, it looks like Army might be winning. I think Army is going to take the lead at almost 40%. All right, so what excites you most about owning and operating your own business? When you think of being a franchise owner, what do you get excited about? Is it the financial freedom? Autonomy, yep, being your own boss, income after retirement, a legacy, another stream of income, creativity. I like that. Independence, absolutely. Self-worth, working with customers, growing possibilities. These are all awesome answers. Living out passion. Independence, working for myself, systems, learning new systems, generational wealth. Yes, these are all awesome benefits to owning your own franchise or owning your own business. All right, so the next question is, what do you feel are your biggest obstacles when it comes to owning and operating your own franchise? Funds, not knowing where to start, yeah. So if you dream of owning your own franchise and some of these obstacles, you know, are very common, right? You, a lot of people don't know where to begin or what those costs are, what those funding streams look like, or where you're going to source that funding from. Our franchise coaches um, here at Vetrapreneur can really help and support you throughout that process from assessments to presenting franchise options that are best suited for you based on conversations that they've had with franchisors. Um, also funding validation and many of those steps in between. So franchise coaching has a proven roadmap um, to help make that process as smooth as possible so you can only benefit from using a coach. And we do offer those coaching services at no cost. That is a free service. All right, so let's jump in. Um, so generally speaking, if you're thinking about opening a franchise in the next six months, you have a minimum credit score of 680, 20K liquid capital to invest, and about 50K net worth, you are ready for an intro call with a coach. 
So um, on today's boot camp, we'll go over terms, franchise disclosure doc, five myths to um, debunking, five myths to franchising, and financing your franchise, some of the basics, also the 10 steps and what that looks like. Um, so it's time for our boot camp. I would like to introduce Chris Hale. Chris Hale is the CEO of Vetrepreneur. Uh, Chris has a long history of helping veterans get into business for themselves. After graduating the Naval Academy and serving in Naval Aviation from 91 to 2000, Chris co-founded Vetrepreneur in 2004 with a mission to connect military veterans to entrepreneurship opportunities. He created the Vetrepreneur of the Year program in 2006 and co-founded Navoba, which is a national veteran-owned business association in 2007. He also started by veteran a uh, national movement to promote purchasing from veteran-owned businesses in 2010. He's taught entrepreneurship classes through Robert Morris University and continues to coach veterans in business today. So thank you so much, Chris, for being here today and for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you, Kayla. Really nice introduction, guys. If you can tell by my background, uh, for me, business, uh, entrepreneurship, and the military are the intersection of two things. Um, that I love most in the world, um, and uh, and being able to talk about that through Vetrepreneur and through this brand, and uh, in many many ways, uh, our team being able to assist veterans into achieving their dreams of business ownership is uh, incredibly rewarding, and I'm blessed to be able to do what I do and go to work doing what I do, and I think our team feels the same way. So, um, really excited to be here. It is. Uh, without question, the thing that I get asked the most, I get asked all the time, Chris, I am interested in owning a business, but I don't have any business background experience, and I don't have any experience in any particular industry. What do I do? Where do I go? And my answer is always the same. First of all, I'm really happy to hear that question because it's one that I can answer, and it's one that I can point them in a direction and offer assistance um, that gets them there. And the answer is franchising. You don't need to have a background in any particular industry and you don't need to have a background in business ownership guys um, it is a baked in system um, it is taking somebody else's systems and processes and intellectual property and vendor relationships and all that stuff wrapped up in a box and go ahead and execute that at your local level um, the reason i think veterans are so particularly well suited for it is what did we do when we were in the military Right? We trained on a system, on a weapon system, whether that was a, a tank or uh, some sort of gun or an anti-aircraft weapon or a submarine or a ship or an airplane. Right, We trained on these things to how to operate them uh, effectively and safely, how to maintain them properly. And that was usually involved a manual and a checklist. Guess what franchising is? Here's your, here's your manual. Here's your checklist. Here's your processes. Here's your safety procedures. Here's what you do. This is how you operate the business. Now go out and execute it. So it's in our DNA. We've been trained that way. Um, so it's just a beautiful hybrid, as Kayla mentioned, between owning your own thing from scratch uh, and, and working for somebody else. It provides a lot of that risk mitigation that you don't get operating your own thing. And as a result, the success rates are considerably higher than businesses that are started from scratch couple terms we're going to get through some stuff right we're going to get through some of the some of the 101 some of the what uh and at the end we're going to have a, a good probably take about 20 minutes of questions from you guys and to be able to hear and uh, and respond to all the questions that inevitably come up um so anyway when we talk about a franchisee the franchisee is you you're the person who licenses from the franchisor which is the creator and the owner of the whole system you license the rights to own and operate that business at a local level. That's you as a franchisee. And then sometimes if you go through the process uh, of, uh, of uh, due diligence to own a, a business, a franchise business, then you're going to be talking to what's called a franchise development person along the way. So some basic terms. Next slide. Some facts. Veterans are uh, incredibly well represented in business ownership, guys, and in franchising for all the reasons I just mentioned. Um, we're disciplined. We can follow a set of rules. We're accustomed to doing that. And we can execute, man. We can execute with precision because when we do it in the military, we don't do it right. Bad things happen, right? Uh, people can get injured or killed. Mission fails. All of those are really grave consequences. So we know how to do it and we know how to do it right. Uh, execution is key here. Um which is the reason that one out of every seven franchisees, one out of every seven, 
franchisees is a military veteran. That's a staggering number. Based on population and how many veterans are in the population of working age adults, that number should only be about one in 14. So what that means is that veterans are twice as likely to own a franchise as non-veterans. Um, big numbers, there will be about 2,500 veterans this year that are going to own and operate and open a franchise for the very first time. That's a big number, right? That's 200 a month. That's like seven every day. So uh, the question you need to be asking yourself, if you're interested enough to attend a, a webinar like this, uh, are you going to be one of those seven veterans every day that opens a franchise? Next slide. So some of the advantages, talked a little bit about these, right? It's, it's I wouldn't call it training wheels, right? But I would say maybe guardrails, right? If you go bowling, winter, it's a good time to go bowling. Um, and if you put those guardrails up, you probably did that when you were a kid, like you're not likely to roll a gutter ball, right? You may not, you may not score a 200 plus, but you're not likely to roll a gutter ball either. I think that's one of the primary advantages. You're taking somebody's business plan, not only plan, but they've executed it and they've proven that model, right? And, and they're going to have, you know, at a minimum, a half a dozen franchise units that are out there operating. And in a lot of cases, that's going to be 50 or 100 or maybe even multiple 100s, right? So this has been proven over time and over various geographical territories. It's a, it's a proven system of results. It does not guarantee success. Let me be very clear. There's, this is not risk-free, but it is definitely risk-mitigated and risk-reduced versus starting a business from scratch. Um, so I think that's, uh, those are some of the really, really primary advantages to franchising and the cost to get into them is, is significantly lower than what you would do, uh, with any brand new business. Some of those fees are going to be franchise fees. These are one-time fees that are paid up front for the rights to own and operate that business. Um, they're usually 40 to $60,000 and oh, by the way, uh, this is something that there are uh, almost all franchises offer a veteran discount here. By the way, they don't offer discounts to any other group, just veterans. I think that speaks volume for the fact that this community uh, really sees tremendous value in recruiting veterans to the point where they're going to offer a discount on that franchise fee and not to anybody else except for people who come from the uh, military community. Typically, uh, that might be, you know, I've seen it as low as 10%. I've seen it as high as 30 or 40 percent. Next slide. You're also going to pay royalties and fees. So these are ongoing fees um, and uh, royalties are a percentage of your revenue moving forward that you'll pay for the life uh, of the term of that franchise agreement. Typically, initial franchise agreement will be somewhere either five or 10 years. Um, and this goes back to the franchisor to pay for all the services uh, and the personnel that are there to support you uh, in the franchising endeavor. So royalties and fees go to pay for that. Royalties typically somewhere, you know, probably five, six, seven, eight percent is is uh, what your normal range of royalties is going to be somewhere in that range. Next slide. A couple different operating models. Um, you know, there is the flexibility within franchising to keep your day job. And we hear that a lot, right? It's a way to even more mitigate some of your risk, you know, uh, by keeping your day job and either hiring someone to run the day-to-day -day operations, or in some cases, uh, what you'll do is you'll have, um, you, you know, it may be a business where you can operate it, um, you know, remotely from your home or, uh, during spend a majority of the time on nights and weekends running your business. So I'd say semi-absentee, maybe about 40 to 50% of franchise ors will permit you to be a semi-absentee owner. Um, and But far and away, the most preferred is owner operator. And that's when you're going to quit your day job and you're going to, uh, you're going to jump in, right? And you're going to put all in, all in effort towards running your business and 100% of franchise operators will permit this one. I'll say one thing too. At veterans, when you talk about going owner operator, I think veterans are much more likely to do, to be able to go after this because you've got many veterans have passive income sources, right? If you're amongst the 30% of veterans that retired from the military, did 20 plus years and have a pension, 
um, you've got passive income coming in, right? That can support you during the time when you're uh, providing income while you're getting your business up and running for that you know period of time when you don't have uh, the business uh, producing income yet. Um, and the other one is VA disability, right? I think we've got something like five or 6 million veterans out of 15 to 20 million that get some sort of VA disability rating and some sort of VA disability income. And that also can help, right? That those sources of passive income are really helpful when you go to start a business. And obviously if you're married and you've got a spouse or have a significant other and have spouse that has household income, that helps as well. But those are the two operating models. Everybody accepts owner operator. And frankly, if you can do it, that is that is going to give your full 100% undivided attention on the business. That's where you're going to, that's where you're really going to be able to grow it fast. Uh, however, 40 to 50% will accept a semi-absentee option. Next slide. Uh, due diligence is made really easy too. Listen, if you've ever done mergers and acquisitions, uh, you know that the most difficult part of doing a, an acquisition of another company is finding all the information uh, that you need to find out about that company in order to make an informed decision on whether or not you should buy it or whether it's a good fit. Um, the great news about franchising is it's highly regulated by the Federal Trade Commission and state uh, attorney generals to the point where they require a, uh, a franchise disclosure document to be uh, produced every year. Um, has 23 items. It's consistent across no matter what franchise that you look at you're going to get access to the FDD and you're going to find consistent information. So every time you look in the item seven, that's going to talk about what is your initial investment and it's going to break it down by every little piece of that. Uh, you're going to look in the item 19. Now the item 19 is optional, but most do produce. In fact, the ones that we work with, we insist that they produce item 19 information. And that's where you're going to see historical financial performance of the franchisees. So, it's consistent information. It's uh, lengthy, as you may imagine. It's usually going to be 50 or 100 pages. And then it's going to have a, a big addendum that includes the franchise agreement. That's the document that you will actually sign um, that's the legally binding thing uh, that you have with the franchise or if and when you pursue that business. But it's a really helpful document. If you guys have ever bought a home, most people have bought a home at one point in their lives. If, they're, if you're thinking about franchising, you've probably done that by now. And if you've done that, you've been given access to the seller's disclosure. And that seller's disclosure is similar to an FDD, except this one has a lot more regulation behind it and a lot more consistency and it's extremely thorough. So really good stuff and really makes the ease of, uh, it's, it's gonna take some time. You gotta read it, you gotta digest it but it makes the ease of collecting all that information uh, very, very seamless. Next slide. Um, some of the myths, right? We get we talked to lots of people that are in franchising and want to get into it. You know, a lot of people think it's very expensive and I'll let you be the judge, right? But you can get into a business that you largely operate out of your home with like work vans and trucks and things like that. If what I'm talking about, when I say home-based, I'm talking about something that does not involve a big brick and mortar commercial build out, right? Of a space like a restaurant or something like that. Most businesses are home-based. Um, that doesn't mean Mickey Mouse kind of stuff. That means like, you know, it, it can, it, they're very, very serious and very well-performing businesses. They just don't involve a retail location. Anyway, you can get into those for usually somewhere between, 75 and 100,000 or 75 and 200,000 dollars all in will get you access to virtually everything in that space. There are some that you can get into for as little as like $50,000. Those there's fewer at that lower end, but you know, 75 to 200k uh not a lot considering you can usually take an, a loan out for, you know, 80 to 90% of that. Um, so those are the, you know, those are the costs you get into brick and mortar stuff where you have to do a retail location and build it out. It's going to be doubled out or more. Uh, is it too risky? Listen, it, there's risk, right? But, you know, I just, I had a client the other day that worked for a big, uh, one of the big consulting firms. You would know the name if I told you, uh, and they got laid off. So, you know, you're not, you know, working for somebody else is not risk-free either. And, um, 
you know, so I would say that uh, it's def there's definitely risk. You're going to invest uh, money into this and you do risk losing it, but it's very much mitigated uh, versus starting a, a business completely from scratch. And you're going to have a tremendous support network. I forgot to mention that earlier. You're going to have other franchise owners that are operating the same business in other parts of the country. They're going to have the same issues you're having. That's your support. Those are your battle buddies, right? And you're going to have a franchisor, which is kind of like a, a parent, right? A set of parents that are there to make sure that you succeed. And they've got your best interest in mind, right? Because they only grow if their franchisees grow. Um, you don't need experience in the industry. They'll teach you everything you need to know about that industry. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that, right? They're like, well, I can't open, you know, an electrical services, uh, residential electrical services or plumbing company because I don't even know how to, like, you know, I can't even change a light bulb. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Your job as a business owner is three things. It's to manage the resources of the business. It's to manage and lead your employees. And it's to be the face of the business to outside constituents, primarily your customers, right? None of those things involves turning wrenches and doing the actual work that the franchise does. Your job as a business owner is to do those three things. And um, so having experience in the industry is not necessary and having business ownership experience is not necessary. Uh, and frankly, in a lot of cases, it's frowned upon because if you are an experienced plumber, you're gonna spend too much time doing the plumbing and not enough time doing the things you need to be doing as the owner, as the CEO of that company. So um, uh, debunking a few of those myths. And then the one we get inevitably, right? We all love to eat. We all, uh, you know, some of us a lot, some of us less so, but we go to the fast food restaurants and we say, man, how cool would it be to own a Moe's Burritos or a Chipotle or a Chick-fil-A or a McDonald's or whatever our flavor is, right? And that is the absolute worst reason to get into a business because you like the product or service. You need to get into the right business because you're well suited for it based on your lifestyle, based on your skills and your interests, based on its availability where you live and where you want to be, and based on your financial ability to be able to afford that business and, and risk tolerance and things like that. So many other things are important about selection of that franchise. Your affinity for the product or service is not one of them. Next slide. Um, we've broken it down into 10 steps. Uh, we've made it very easy for us uh, you know, to walk you through if you decide that you wanna use our services or for you to walk you through it yourself, right? And I think, you know, again, we talked to so many people who have been what I call at the buffet, right? They've, they've Googled franchising. They've talked to, you know, so many individual franchisors. They've talked to all these different people because they've signed up for all these lists. And they come to us and they say, you know, I'm really interested in doing this. And the first question I ask them is, well, how long have you been thinking about this? And what have you done so far? And they tell me, well, I've gone to the buffet and I've been thinking about this for years. And it's like, well, why haven't you done anything? And the reason is because they're like, well, I just haven't had enough information to be able to be comfortable making an informed decision. And uh, it's extremely common. Guys, there's a lot to consider, right? And most people are frankly, don't even know where to start. So they Google it. And then once you do that, you're going to be given all kinds of advice from people that you don't know. Who can I trust? Who do I not trust? And it's just coming, you got information coming at you from every direction at the wrong time, and you have no way of processing it and no way of putting it into, into any type of perspective. So bring, breaking it down into steps is a really important part. So I'll just highlight a few of these. Um, you know, a, a discovery meeting or a discovery call, if were, you were to use that with a coach, is where they'll go through everything uh, and, and figure out what it is that makes you tick. And then knowing the, the franchise opportunities that are out there, they'll, it'll be able to suit you and match you up with something that's going to match well with, uh, with what your skills and interests and lifestyle and those things are going to be to yield the most probability of success. The other one I love is validation, right? Part of the process is going through validation, which is having an opportunity to talk to other franchise owners. It's testimonials. It's let me talk to the other people that are doing this. What do you like? What don't you like? What are the challenges? Not are there challenges? I can tell you right now, 
every business has challenges. Uh, it's what are those? And more importantly, how does the franchisor help you overcome those? Um, and finally, this, you know, getting through towards the end, it's called Discovery Day. It's an opportunity, uh, oftentimes in person, sometimes remotely, but you get to meet with the CEO, uh, the leadership, the people that are going to be doing your training, everybody at the franchisor level, and a final uh, check on everything. If you do this right, this whole process should be done in about 10 weeks. Um, it'll involve a little bit of homework in between. You're going to have two or three hours a week, I would say, sometimes four or five that you're going to need to commit to the process, right? But I can guarantee you one thing. If you go through this process and do it right, at the end of this, you will have the answer to your questions. Two questions. A, should I own and operate a franchise? And oftentimes the answer is no. Okay, I just want to be very clear. Business ownership is not for most people. Um, but this, this gets you to that decision point. Is this for me? Yes or no. And if it is for me, have I found the right franchise that I'm well suited for. I can guarantee you that you will have those two answers at the end of this, but you have to, you will get out of it what you put into it. And it's not just receive only. It is an, you, you must be an active participant in the process. Next slide. Uh, how do you fund it? Kayla, take it away. Thanks, Chris. Lots of awesome information. Chris is a wealth of knowledge. I hope you guys are excited. All right, so some of the basics on funding. <clears throat> Typically, your total investment required is going to be anywhere from between 100K to 200K for your home-based businesses. Um, about two times that for a brick and mortar. Your minimum credit score should be around 680. We do have some partners and resources that our coaches can connect you with um, if you're not quite there yet, so they can help you a little bit. Um, your liquid capital should be about 20K minimum. 50K is a lot better. Um, that can get you a lot more options. And then your net worth should be 50K minimum um, and 100K is even better. That'll give you some more options. The types of funding. Um, so you, these are your four major types. You're gonna have your SBA loan, um, which is a loan from the bank, but backed by the SBA. Um, a HELOC, which is a little more common. Those are gonna be your home equity line of credits. That, that's where you're using the equity that you have in the home that you own um, to sort of invest back in yourself or to pull out early. And then ROBS is where you're taking your investment accounts. So those are going to be your 401ks or your TSPs, and you're rolling those over into business startups. So instead of taking your investment funds and investing them in the market, you're taking your investment funds and investing them into yourself. So there's no penalty to do that as long as um, that business is started as a C-Corp. And so we have some attorneys that we can connect you with um, that can help you get that all started. Another option is friends and family, right? Um, that is a great resource. If you are the favorite child, don't forget to ask your parents, which Chris always mentions. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit later, probably too. Um, but don't forget to tap on friends and family. They can be great resources. Um, and a lot of them want to see you successful. So those are your major funding streams. There are some non-traditional funding streams. We've created a resource document for you that we will put in the chat. Those are not going to be the primary ways that you fund your business. Um, those are going to be sort of your grants, your governor's funds, and things like that. Um, they are smaller amounts, and they're likely not going to be the, the main way that you fund your business. But there is money out there for you know, economic development and, and things like that. So we've put it all in a document for you guys um, to reference. And I think that is it for this slide. There we go. Back to you, Chris. All right. Good. And I, <laughs> guys, they, for the funding as well, listen... Um, there are a lot of things to consider. And if you go to one source uh, to explore funding your franchise, you're probably not going to get exposed to the other possible sources. And those may be better for you, right? Um, there are tax consequences. Um, sometimes there's uh, local consequences based on how you finance that business. So uh, it's, it depends on where you are in your life stage, right? So it's really important to get um, objective uh, advice with with a with a breadth of perspective when you're thinking about how you're going to fund your business. It's not it's not hard, um, right? It's um, but you need to be matched with the proper channel, and that 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 process of understanding what's the right channel for me is one that you really need to get good advice on. Okay, uh, brings us to where we are, right? We. Chris, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention veteran discounts, military discounts on franchising. Yep, that's right. That's right. Franchise fee discounts. Um, so we've got 
uh, free full service franchise coaching opportunities. Uh, we offer that service for free. Uh, we are a veteran owned business. We ultimately, uh, if you own, if you go through the process and you own and operate, uh, that, uh, franchise business very much like real estate, uh, we get paid. Ultimately our company gets paid ultimately through, uh, the franchise or, uh, it doesn't cost you any more or any less to use a coach, uh, to the franchisor and that service is free to you. And what it is guys, it's, it's going through this whole process with a guide. There's a process to it. We have a portal that walks you through and has a lot of support materials. The way that coach relationship will work is that you'll, uh, you'll do a couple things, uh, self-assessments. This is actually step one to go through the 101 and then you'll do a self-assessment and then you have the opportunity to have your discovery call with your coach. They'll spend an hour, uh, one-to-one -one talking with you about uh, skills and interests, lifestyle, geographical, financial, what are your goals, what are your fears, all those things taken into account. And then they'll follow up with a curated list of franchises uh, that they believe that you are well su suited for. Uh, those will be sent off to you and you have a follow-on discussion there. Following that, there will be introductions to uh, a several franchise ors. Uh, you'll get into all the 10 steps, right? About once a week or once every week and a half, you'll have a scheduled call with your coach. And anytime in between, you've got direct access to that coach, the whole journey path, right? All the way through the 10-week process. And by the way, we can speed that process up. We've seen it happen as quickly as five weeks and we can slow that process down. I've seen it, ha uh, it, it can take as long as three or four months and, and sometimes longer. Um, so just to let you guys know. By the way, the other thing I wanted to mention, when you buy your franchise uh, and you sign your franchise agreement, which is step 10, uh, you are now an owner, but it's going to take you usually at least a month or six weeks and sometimes as many as three or four months if it involves a piece of real estate and a build out for you to get to the point where you open. Sometimes even longer than that, if it's a big restaurant or something like that, it's a huge build out. So I just want to let you know that, right? The process of of getting to franchise ownership is usually around two and a half months, but you're gonna have time after that uh, that's gonna be required to get to the point where you open. Um, our job as coaches is to get you to a point where you understand if franchising is right for you, and secondly, if you've chosen the right one. We wanna make sure that you don't have regrets, right? I say this all the time. I don't want you being, you know, in your retirement years, being in your 70s or your 80s or whatever it is, looking back on your life with regrets, saying shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? I want you to say, I explored that. I put the time into it, into the process. Uh, I had good perspective and good coaching along the way. And I either did it and I opened a franchise or I decided that it wasn't for me. But I'm not going to do the woulda, coulda, shoulda game. And I guarantee you that we will get you to that decision point. Uh, if you put the time into it, we will support you all along the way. Um, okay, next slide. We're going to introduce some coaches if they're here. If they're not, hey, everyone's here. No one's busy. Come on. Um, so what we do, guys, if they don't show up, if they're busy doing other stuff, we put a mustache on them, but no mustaches today. So they're both here. Um, but uh, two of our coaches join us here today. Uh, very esteemed gentlemen and super qualified to do what they're doing. I'm going to introduce George Deku first. George is a former Chick-fil-A operator. He did that for nine years up in uh, Amarillo, Texas. And before that, he was uh, 31 years of Air Force senior service. And before that, he was uh, an Air Force brat. So he's grown, grown up in a military family, done a whole lot there, and then uh, did the Chick-fil-A franchise operator for nine years after that. So welcome, George. Hey, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, just want to encourage anyone that's interested, deeply interested in wanting to become a business owner. No kidding. You just you just need to try the program. Uh, it has a great track record of success uh, for business owners. Um, so we've, we've got a lot of good success stories, some that you'll be able to follow, I think, uh, here in the near future. But you know, the Ventrepreneur franchise model is fine-tuned to ensure that you're going to get it, the information you need. Plus, if you do want to be successful, um, guarantee you, you're going to be able to find that, that uh, right recipe with us. Uh, anxious to show you 
what we have available, plus uh, anxious to really share my business experience with you along the way. So thanks. Thank you, George. George is uh, down in the great state of Texas, guys. So that's where he he resides. We talked to so many veterans in Texas. They've got really military-friendly state. Uh, also joined today uh, from the great city of Pittsburgh, Doug Herster. Doug is a former uh, P3 pilot in the Navy uh, and had a great uh, career in uh, retail, uh, corporate America. After that, great leadership positions there. He's also a graduate of the number one business school in the world, the University of Pennsylvania, Wharton School of Business. And uh, he hates when I say that. But guys, I'm here to tell you, our coaches are real. They're the real thing. They've got legitimate backgrounds um, and uh, they're here to help. Doug, welcome. Yeah, hey, thanks, Chris. I, you know how I appreciate that. But it was just to share an interesting story from earlier today. I was on a call with a client of mine, and he was talking to the president and CFO of a franchise he's interested in. He's pretty far down the path. This is a, a franchise that's owned by three veterans, was started by three veterans. And the CEO of the franchise said, uh, he, the client made a comment about you know education or something, and the CEO of the franchise said, well, you've got a PhD in executing someone else's business plan from your military experience. Love and it. it. He actually said stupid business plan, which I found very funny, but he, um, it, it was, it was telling and it's, you know, the franchises respect the experience of the military and it's a great fit because of, you know, the experience of leading a team, executing a plan. Um, it, it's a great fit. The process works. If you're committed to the process, please sign up for a coach call. If you want to go to the buffet, this is not the place for you. So if you want to get in and see if it's the right thing, hit the QR code and uh, we'll be talking to you. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, guys. And they, they've had a busy week. I think each of them have had uh, close to 10 or 15 discovery calls uh, with clients this week and, um, and many, many other follow-on calls. So uh, we're, we're keeping them fully engaged um, and a great team behind them as well. Um, so yeah, just, you know, listen, you can go it alone. You certainly can. Um, I don't understand why anybody would do it if, whether it's us or some, somebody else that is a trusted advisor that knows a lot about this and a lot of the areas around it. Um, the experience counts. The perspective is important. Uh, you are going to be guided through a process. You're going to be held accountable for going through that process. This is a two-way vetting process, by the way, guys. Um, you need to put your best foot forward. Uh, you need to demonstrate to the franchisor that you're somebody that is worthy of owning a piece of their business at the local, 100% of the local area. Uh, and you're going to treat their business with the dignity and respect and care and feeding that, that they would. Uh, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for leaders who are going to execute and get stuff done. So um, uh, going it uh, through the guide and all the different uh, things that you're going to encounter and all the different decisions that you're going to encounter along the way. Uh, very much having uh, an advisor that is there to help you along the way uh, is, is, a, is an important piece of it. Highly recommend it. Next slide. Uh, we've got a big, a big team, right? We call it a concierge service, but we've got folks uh, that help design and populate information on the portal that you're going to have access to. Uh, we've got accountants that will provide free franchise. Uh, these are CPAs that will provide free franchise uh, financing strategy sessions with you. Um, you know, uh, we've got lawyers that if you want to have a lawyer review the FDD and the franchise agreement, we can refer them to you. I will say up front, if you want to use the lawyer, they will charge you, but we've negotiated discounted rates. And these are uh, franchise lawyers that know their stuff. We've got financing providers, right? When we decide what the optimal uh, way to finance this business is, we're going to set you up with people that we've got relationships with that are going to help you along the way. And then even benefits providers. So it is 100% a, a team effort. Your coach is going to be your primary point of contact um, that you're going to have, like I said, a very, very close relationship with and a lot of communication but there is a team that they're going to be introducing to you uh, along the way and a team that sometimes you don't even meet that's behind the scenes supporting you. So we're there to help. 
Next slide. All right. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is a uh, just a few of the folks that we have helped along the way. You can see very well represented uh, across the spectrum. Uh, you know, every branch of service, every rank, every age, every race, every gender. It's it's all there, right? And uh, and it's it's part of a a, a community of veterans who own businesses. There's two and a half million veterans in the United States that own a business. And uh, it's just really rewarding. So we consider them part of the family and we're very uh, proud to help them along their way into business ownership. Next slide. Um, like I said, if you get into it, guys, we're very, it's, it's, uh, it's a process. You're gonna get out of it what you put into it. So we ask that you just treat it with the process with the professional respect that you would treat any other professional process, right? So show up, show up on time. If you have a spouse or a significant other, we really recommend that you bring that person with you as often as possible to the various meetings. Um, even if they're not going to be directly involved in the business, if you're like me, if you've uh, made decision on some big decision and you take it to your spouse at the 11th hour, uh, you know, usually there's going to be a lot of questions and there might be veto power on that. So it's just the right thing to do to involve your spouse with this process so they understand it really th the, throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, there's going to be meetings, right? There's going to be various meetings that you're going to have to attend to. There's going to be various forms of homework that you'll need to do, right? The, you, you're going to need to watch videos and read certain things and respond to things. So it is a very active process. I'd say at, at you know two to three, sometimes you know at various points, maybe four hours a week that you're going to have to invest in it. And you're going to need to carve out the time to do that. Um, but like I said, you get out of it what you put into it. And at the end of it, you're going to be able to make a very informed decision. Okay, next slide. It's our favorite time of day, Chris. It's Q&A. Let's go. <laughs> Bring it on. All right. So we've got lots of questions. All right. So first one is, can I own a franchise in a different state or country? Yes. Yep, sure can. Um, every state has different, you know, levels of um, regulation. Um, but yes, you can absolutely, you can absolutely do that. Most franchisers are going to want you to be within some relative close proximity of your uh, franchise location. So typically that's, you know, 50 miles or an hour or two at most. Um, but, you know, for many of us, if you live near a state line or if you live in a location, but you're going to be moving somewhere else, for sure. Absolutely. No problem. All right. Next question is, how does our team choose what franchise is a good fit? It's it's unique. It's a custom fit, right? It's you're not buying a you're not buying a jacket, uh, a suit off the shelf, right? This is a custom fit suit. And uh, our job is to make sure that it fits really well and you look really good and you you succeed. Um, that is our goal. And in order to do that, you've got to get the right fit. So you heard me talk about a few things. The wrong fit is is often found haphazardly. And what I mean by that is going to the buffet and Googling stuff. Hey, this one's popular. Oh, this is the number one franchise for this or that, or this one's on the franchise 500 list or whatever. Um, Here's the difference the the owner is you and you are not a carbon copy of the other people that own that franchise. So you have to make sure that you uniquely and your situation in your life at, at, at this point in your life are well suited to own and operate that franchise. You're not selecting things for your 401k out of a list of mutual funds, guys. This is needs to be a custom fit. And, um, and, and we will make sure that we go through uh, all the things that are required to make sure that you are well suited for that. I talked about them before, but it bears repeating your skills and interest, your lifestyle, where your lifestyle is now and where it might be in the co next couple of years, uh, geographical financial considerations, what you want to get out of this, right? Some people are looking for a lifestyle business. Some people are looking for high ROI. Some people want to run a single territory. Some people want to run something that scales quickly, right? There's, there's countless considerations and it's a combination of art and science that we use to find a really, really good match for you. 
And, and it's not just instantaneous, right? You might get 12 to 15 options from your coach after the first discovery call. And then a, another discussion ensues. And ideally we, we get that down to one or two or three and we'll start making introductions and the due diligence continues. So um, it's a very involved, very thorough process. That's great information, Chris. You kind of answered a little bit of the next one. So I'm going to combine these two. It says, what are some of the hot franchises currently offered or the top 10? Yeah, um, I'm going to go industry because I guard against hot franchises. Um, I think hot industries are better. Uh, and what I mean by that is we look for industries. We, we, you know, we ultimately want to push veterans into industries that have a lot of economic, what I call economic tailwinds, right? So something that has long-term growth prospects, the industry is expanding, right? So you're not talking about you're shrinking, right? You have to have bigger market share just to, just to maintain where you are. Right. But when you're talking about things like senior care, huge franchise industry we the biggest generation we have and the wealthiest generation we have is the baby boomers the youngest ones are about 60 and the oldest ones are about 80 and they have lots of money and they're going to live a long time and they're going to need care in their homes medical and non-medical what's called companion care senior care is a giant industry another one huge one is home services listen when i was a kid we had a chore list that was a mile long and all weekend we we did chores around the house we cleaned we we repaired stuff we did you know lawn work we did all that stuff on our own we we don't live in that kind of a society anymore right you go through any neighborhood today and what's what do you see during the work week what do you see monday through friday nine to five you see work vans with franchise businesses with people in those work vans coming out and performing services in homes whether it's cleaning or 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 uh, you know, new gutters on a home, or new windows, or new flooring, or taking care of a plumbing issue, or whatever it may be. Pest control, right? Uh, home services is a huge one, and it is only growing bigger. Uh, business to business services, right? Providing uh, services that that other business owners and selling to other business owners is a big one. So um, that's where we like to push. When you talk about the hot it, the hot businesses, I like to refer to the hot industries. And, and I'll just say this too, what you don't hear on that list is food. That is far and away the most common one we hear of. And I will tell you that food is A, extremely expensive because it involves a really expensive build out. You're dealing with perishable items. You're dealing with really small margins. You're dealing with much bigger uh, employee counts than you would with a lot of other businesses and super high turnover. Um, so food is a really challenging business. Yes, we have put veterans into food businesses, um, but only after we make sure that that they are well suited for it and it's the right fit for them. Absolutely. I'm still trying to figure out, Chris, how to get my kid to finish the chore list. So if you have any pointers, you let me know. <laughs> Call a franchise. All right. so, Call a franchise, right? That, that's my solution. All right. So this one, um, I'll touch on this one. There are the updates, unless you, Chris, you have any updates as well, but are there any updates on legislation allowing us to use the GI Bill for entrepreneurship? So I am aware that there were some changes to the apprenticeship piece of that and, and being able to use those bills for apprenticeship programs that lead to career outcomes, but I am unaware of anything allowing it to go into business ownership. Chris, I don't know if you have anything to add. I cannot add to that. Okay, so we, we can look into it and get back to you. If there is some legislation, we'd be happy to provide you with some info. All right, so the next one is, can can you open a business with a family or friend? Family yes. or friend. Yeah, and, and honestly, guys, it's it's a really good, if, if, you, if you feel like you've got a good, I'll say core values match with that family or member or friend, uh, it can be really great. Um, you know, listen, it's, you might be friends with them personally, but you got to make sure that they share your work values, right? And that's what I mean by that. Otherwise, it can be a nightmare. Um, but if you do, it can be really great. You split the cost, you split the risk, you split the workload, right? All that stuff is divided by two. Um, 
and if they're going to be an active participant in the business, or if they're just going to be a silent investor and take an equity stake or loan you money, um, you know, again, the risk is mitigated and you've got someone else who has, you know, it's more energy. It's more people with skin in the game, right. That are out there making sure that that business is successful. So uh, whether it's a battle buddy, a civilian friend, you know, um, a longtime childhood friend, uh, uh, or a family member, uh, it can work out really, re really well. And and I'll you you know you mentioned parents, Kayla. I'll mention that as well. You know, um, franchise owners are all ages. You know, I would say probably most are typically in their forties and fifties, but we we do work with veterans who are in their twenties and thirties that get into franchising in sixties. But you know, you think about when you're forty in your forties, fifties, sixties, your parents are twenty five, thirty years older typically, right? They're they're in the fourth quarter of their life and when if they've got a nest egg and they're you know they're going to leave you as a child some money in their will along the way um oftentimes it's much more rewarding for them to be a part of your life and to use that money instead while they're still alive to loan you money to be able to start your business so that's very common and can be very rewarding for both parties so don't be afraid if you're in that situation don't be afraid to ask your parents I stick with it only if you're the uh, favorite kid, though. Be afraid if you're not. All right. That's so <laughs> what are the most lucrative franchises for small towns? Good question. Really good question. Um, small towns can be challenging, right? I mean, typically a franchise is going to, you know, thrive on the population because they're going to provide products and services for that population. Um, I would say that, you know, it is not one size fits all for small towns. I would just say that overall, it's a little more challenging. Um, there will be some things that are available and they come in all different industries. But I would also say that um, if you have, if you're relatively close to a big town, you know, we talked to folks that they're like, hey, I'm, a, I'm an hour away from, you know, central Atlanta or from Dallas, uh, metroplex center right but i'm an hour away but maybe the suburbs where there's a big population is only 30 minutes away that can work right so uh you can think about it that way as well but really good question um the answer truthfully is there's not anything that necessarily lines up exactly with that it's going to be more challenging but the opportunities are just going to be less across the board but they will be pretty widespread across all industries All right. So the next one is, does the FTD come from the franchise or, um, and do we have anyone that can look at the agreement for them? Yeah. So two documents, the, the FDD and the franchise agreement, they're separate documents. Um, the, the, the FDD you will sign for, uh, but that is, just, that is a disclosure document, right? You sign for it only uh, because you, uh, they have to, make sure the franchisor has to make sure that they disclose that to you. So it will come from the franchisor. Um, you can, there are some state websites where you can download FDDs and you can find them. Um, but frankly, I, I really wouldn't recommend doing that because if you go through a process and, and you get it down to a couple of franchises that you're going to start really doing due diligence on, you'll get the most up, you're guaranteed to get the most up to date FDD at that time. Um, so, you know, our process for that is fourfold, right? And it's in, it's sequential in this order. One, you have to read that FDD in its entirety. You're going to want to mark down what you, questions you have on that, anything that doesn't seem right or, or seems, you know, does, doesn't seem right to you and write down all the questions. Secondly, you're going to want to review that with the franchisor. That franchisor knows that FDD through and through. They probably wrote it. So they're going to be able to respond and give you perspective on that. If after that, you've got additional questions or concerns, talk with your coach and they can go through it with you. Finally, uh, we would recommend uh, if you want to take a, a fourth step, you have the option to have a lawyer review it with you. So really, those are the, the, the four steps that we take with, with FDD review. First two are mandatory and the last two are optional. All right. So the next one is, 
are there any creative options for someone who may not have the 20K liquid cash? Uh, not really. Um, anything under 20K is difficult. I mean, I would tell you your options are really limited to friends and family or, you know, spending less than you have as income on a monthly basis times the number of months to get you up to that level. Could someone pull out the liquidity that they have in their home to use as for that 20 liquid cash? Yep, you can. Um, the only caveat to that is typically you're going to need to have about two to three months pass uh, before that is considered liquid capital, right? So you can certainly take a home equity line out. Um, you can withdraw that, but it'll typically take about two or three months of sitting in a savings account or a checking account before that's considered liquid. All right. So the next one is, can someone go through the nine weeks, nine week program to learn and not commit to purchasing a franchise if they don't feel that it's a fit? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For sure. The goal, the goal at the end of that, and and I apologize, I think the slide looks like it's nine steps, but it's 10. Um, but it is uh the goal is the goal is not for you to buy a franchise. The goal is for you to make a decision on buying a franchise. And if you decide you want to, you found the right one. And at any point you can withdraw from that process. Um and absolutely that's we consider that success. If you find out at the end of that, that franchising is not for you, that's a success. We've informed your decision, right? Or if you, through the end of that process, find out that you're in the wrong fit, and sometimes it takes that long. Usually, you know, by step eight or nine, you're pretty sure. But if you get all the way to, you know, if you get all the way through step nine and, you know, right before you sign, uh, you just feel like, hey, listen, this is not for me. Uh we, we, we'll move on to something else and we'll find you something different, right? Um, so absolutely. Yeah, our coaches are great. They really hone in on what you would be most successful with. All right. So do we recommend attending national franchise shows? Um, sure, you can. I mean, that's similar to going to the buffet. Uh, you're going to be... You know, you're going to see a lot of stuff. It's like walking down. It's it's like buffet, guys. I mean, I, I use that analogy because that's what it is, right? You walk down a buffet and everything looks amazing, right? And what do you do at a buffet? If you're like me, you start with your favorite thing. And then you feel guilty after you've had two or three plates of that. And then you move on to something that's green. And you put a little bit of that on your plate, right? And and so what happens? You You consume a lot of food. Oftentimes, it's not the best food for you, what you should be doing. It's the wrong timing. It's the wrong order. It's just a mess. And usually after you go to a buffet, you don't feel so good. Um, and I would say that, you know, the buffet happens when you Google franchising. The buffet also happens if you were to go to a franchising show. Um, so it's okay to do that. But I would say it's best to do that if you're under the guidance of some advisor that's a trusted advisor that is going to be steering you in the right direction that can take all the information and and put that into a construct where you can process it and put it into proper perspective so that you can make decisions on it if that's not there you're very likely to make impulse buys impulse decisions based on not full information and those don't usually end well All right, Chris, so we're right up on time. Um, I still want to ask a couple. There's still a lot of questions. So I want to ask just one. Yeah, have at it. We can go over. Okay. Yeah, we can go um, over. And so, anybody needs to jump, go ahead and jump. All right. So someone wants to know if they're not quite there yet as far as their credit score or maybe the income standard, do you recommend still going through the program? Uh, if you don't have the liquid capital or the net worth requirement, um, it's really not worth starting the process. I would recommend you get to a point where you have that. 
um, you're just not, there's, you're just not going to qualify and you're just, you're going to get excited about stuff, but you're not going to be able to qualify. So I don't recommend that. If the, the one exception would be for credit score, um, we can work with, you know, we've worked with credit repair specialists that have been very successful uh, in every case is different. I can't promise anything, but we've worked with credit repair specialists that have been very successful getting folks up, um, you know, 50 or sometimes even 80 or 90 points on their credit score. So um, we can work with someone who's maybe in the mid 600s because there is the possibility to get you higher. Um, so I, that, I would say that would be the one exception. Okay. And then someone wants to know if if they can sorry that one's a bit confusing i'll come back to that one can you buy a franchise from another franchise owner versus directly from the franchise itself or franchise or itself yep those are called resales um so resales are a little bit of a different animal so these are they really come in two flavors one is going to be um a franchise owner that has struggled and it's not working out so well for them and they're wanting to get rid of it. Um, the other flavor is a franchise owner who has been successful. So two, two areas, what are you gonna pay for that? You might get a discount on the one that's in trouble, but there might be some underlying issues there that you're not aware of, right? Because the same, what you've got is a business that has now a history of being in business. There might have been things that have happened. So the, the due diligence and the research on that business is not as pure as it is with a new business, right? It's kind of like the inspection on a new home is a lot, there's a lot less that can go wrong than if it's a pre-existing home or a new car versus a pre-existing car. It's the same thing with a the business. There might be stuff in damage there that you're not aware of that's going to be really hard to detect. Um, so that's the one thing I would caution against. It's a more, it's a riskier process. And in the case of a very successful franchise, you're typically going to pay a premium, right? Uh, when, when franchise owners go to sell, they're going to sell their business for a multiple of their annual earnings. That can be anywhere from two, three, four times annual earnings is what those will sell for. So you're typically going to pay considerably more for those businesses than you would a business from scratch because you're, you're paying that owner for their success and the and the uh, how they've built that business up, so yes, they're called resales, um, but they are, you know, they're just a little bit of a different animal. Great advice, Chris. All right, so I think this is a good question to close on. But if we haven't gotten to your question yet, make sure that you connect with the coach or contact us, um, and we're happy to provide you with any information that we have touched on today's. Uh, workshop. But someone wants to know, how much does your concierge service cost to the veteran? Are there any frontal costs? Um, and would you consider franchise ownership a passive income stream? Uh, everyone's, you know, listen, we do get folks that are looking for passive. I'll start with that first. It's, um, you know, listen, the risk-free, employee-free ATM machine low investment, just print cash for me is a dream. If you find it, let us know. Um, I would tell you that the more passive the business, probably the less it's going to return on investment. So you, like most things, right, you get out of it what you put into it. And they're oftentimes not shortcuts for success. So I'll just leave it at that, right? There are varying levels of an owner's involvement, but that's going to come with commensurate levels in the return, typically. Um, and then I think with regard to the first part of their question, the concierge services that we offer, uh, first of all, the coaching is entirely free. If you want to hire a lawyer to review an FDD and an, a franchise agreement, the ones that we've worked with are going to typically cost you around 1600 bucks to do that, to perform that service for you. That's that, that would be an out of pocket cost that you would have. Um, if you want to engage a credit res, a repair specialist, we'll connect you with folks. We've negotiated discounted rates, but that's also going to cost you a few hundred dollars with them. Um, 
you know, the, the CPA is going to give you a financing strategy session for free. But if you want them to set up your LLC or if you want them to do your tax return, obviously that's going to cost you out of pocket for those sorts of services. Um, the, the financing people that we set you up with, right? If you obviously take an SBA loan out, there's going to be interest and there's going to be fees on that. So there's, you know, there are those kinds of things. Um, but the, the coaching service entirely is free. And the concierge is nice because we've really pre-vetted these folks and we've negotiated uh, either reduced uh, fees with them for those that charge fees, or um, we have negotiated um, an ability for them to do uh, uh, to offer some free value added services. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. All right. Yeah. So if you guys are ready for a discovery call with a franchise coach, you can go ahead and scan Let me, this way. There we go. Scan the QR code um, or visit vetrepreneur.com forward slash step two. Make sure you go ahead and pick a day and time to get scheduled to connect with one of our coaches. And I wish you the best of luck. We're super excited you came uh, to join us today and, and to spend some time with us, ask questions and gain some insight on the process. And we hope that you choose to connect with a coach and that we can help you on your next journey. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. This was fantastic. I hope you guys found it as valuable as I did. Um, and we hope that we were able to provide you with some information to help you on your journey. Thanks, guys. I just want to say one last thing. From the battle. So thank you. I got to say it. Uh, I thought the video was going to start. No, listen, our, our coaches are a few weeks out. In some cases, they're into late February. Um, if you wait too long, you might be into March. And I will tell you that please go ahead and sign up. Um, we're, we're very busy, um, but, you know, go ahead and sign up, pick a day and a time. We will do our best if we can to move you up. Uh, if, if openings, uh, uh, come available. Um, and the other thing I would say is if you want to go down a coach, uh, path, please do yourself a favor and don't go to the buffet as well. Uh, there are some things that we will need to unwind if you go ahead and do that. So, um, Anyway, just a, a note of uh, a few additional notes as you go to schedule. All right, roll the video. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate you joining us. <laughs> Thanks, today. Chris. Bye, guys. From the battlefields to the boardrooms, the spirit of a veteran is unyielding. Risk takers, disciplined executors, team builders. Military service has forged us into professionals with the ability to get it done. But what's next after service? Meet the legends, Fred Smith, founder of FedEx, Truett Cathy, founder of Chick-fil-A, Ross Perot, founder of Perot Systems, Phil Knight, founder of Nike, and Gordon Logan, founder of Sport Clips. They turned their military discipline into entrepreneurial success. And so can you. Why franchising? It's the ideal pathway for a entrepreneur, a proven business model, a roadmap to success and an industry that understands the skills you bring. Franchising means using proven systems, intensive training, and a support system designed to make you successful. One out of every seven franchises is owned by a military veteran. You can join their ranks. Your next mission awaits, and we're here to guide you. Your legacy is just beginning.